So we played Blade and Soul and you know what? It is still actually a lot of fun. It has always been a lot of fun. There is no denying that. Today, I wanna to talk about what I enjoyed about Blade and Soul, and I want to discuss whether or not Blade and Soul is worth starting or coming back to in 2020. So, welcome to the third episode of Is This MMORPG Worth Playing? Do note that this is not a full official review of the game. These are just my thoughts, my impressions. Now, Mrs. Sticks and I streamed Blade and Soul for a month or so over on Twitch. We stream every MMO we do videos on over there, so I urge you to come on by and visit us if you're interested in being a part of our journey through various games. Over the course of our month streaming, we got to play with a lot of you guys, and that was a lot of fun. The multiplayer aspect of MMOs are what draw a lot of us to the genre after all. Dungeons, raids, PvP, world boss, Bosses, guilds, a sense of community is important in games like this, and leveling with a group is a very rewarding experience regardless of the game. The leveling experience itself in Blade and Soul is hit and miss. The game's leveling experience has been truncated quite significantly over the years, with players only being required to follow along with the main story to level. Side quests, grinding monsters, dungeons, there's no real purpose to any of them other than to progress to the next area. Heck, when I used to play actively, dungeons used to offer you weapons that were actually better than what you had when you entered them, so there was a purpose behind farming them. The same would apply to those smaller field bosses that you'd go out and farm like Pinchy and Jiangshi. Now, other than farming them purely for the cosmetic items, they serve absolutely no purpose. These days though, with the, and I'm gonna go ahead here and say streamlined leveling experience, you're given the best weapon for your level so you can push towards the end game as fast as humanly possible. Now, don't get me wrong, the story itself is, while a little bit shonen, I guess is the term I'm going to use here, pretty easy to follow and interesting enough to warrant not skipping. However, much of the story is solo. Instances that are required to be completed solo, areas where you're cut off from groups and other players altogether. This makes it much more difficult to level with other players. Where there used to be a purpose to running with other players, with how easy the game has become and how little content is actually done within a group, I feel like the game is more of a solo experience up until the late game. But I mean, that is just the leveling experience after all. Leveling is only one fast of what makes a game. Combat is another, and the action combat in Blade and Soul has always been top tier. Now, there has been this ongoing argument between fans of Black Desert and Blade and Soul over which has the better form of action combat. In my opinion, both have their pros and cons, but at the end of the day, they are both completely different games targeting completely different audiences. Blade and Soul's combat is a mixture between two different styles of combat reactive and skill-based. You have access to a basic ability that is bound to your left mouse button and blocks, parries, or counters to your right click depending on your class of choice. Then you have additional abilities bound to keys on your hotbar, damaging abilities, crowd control abilities. Heck, several classes actually possess the ability to either heal themselves or those around them if they spec into it. Blade and Soul has a highly interactive combat system that is not really replicated very often in other MMOs. Now, there are a few major issues with Blade and Soul that I have not only come across, but I also hear about by literally every other player and content creator that I've discussed Blade and Soul with. Endgame is one of those issues as it is built specifically for whales, people that spend exorbitant amounts of money on the game and the endgame itself is very heavily RNG. And the population has been at a steady rate of decline for the last several years, not spiking up at literally any point. Where games like the Elder Scrolls Online, Final Fantasy XIV, and World of Warcraft all have large spikes in population whenever a new expansion is released, literally multiplying their overall population by several times. And I mean, you know what? Even Black Desert has a large spike in concurrent players whenever they release a brand new class or a new region. But with Blade and Soul, they push out new content pretty regularly. And yeah that is pretty much it. The player base, while not dead by any means, is definitely not growing. It has not grown in years, 
and will ultimately continue its steady decline until it joins the ranks of other MMOs like Rift and Terra. But you know what? Just because the player base is very low in terms of active players and the game is targeted towards the high rollers, does not mean that you cannot have fun in the game as long as your goal isn't to be competitive. The game is absolutely gorgeous. It has a fascinating storyline. It is fully voice acted. It has some really sick combat and a lot of positive features that make your first time running through this game quite the experience. So for new players, this is an MMO that is totally worth playing. For everyone else though, I doubt it is ever going to be worth coming back to. And I know there's probably a lot more of the game that I probably could have covered. Dungeons, raids, PvP. But once again, this is not like an official full review of the game. These are just my thoughts on it and my impressions of what I played through over the course of the month. These are my experiences and this is what I played through and what new players are going to play through when they start the game for the first time. Now, let's take a few minutes here and enjoy some highlights from our streams. It looks as though there's definitely some kind of insertion there. Canoodling. Naked canoodling. Oh my god. They're wrapped in bandages. Obviously, they weren't naked. Someone, you know, wrapped them up, obviously. I hear someone outside just being like, woo! Woo! Okay, where do I run to get up? Okay, hold on. Let me get a running start. Nope. <laughs> Damn it. You got this. No, I don't. Where'd you go to get up? You just jump up. I just jump up? Yeah, you just get up. I don't remember how to get up. What you think is against terms of service is giving something else that feels like a throw punch. Yep, guys, that is the sound she makes when she sneezes. Sorry. Chat, when I made this character, it made me create Krillin. <laughs> so here we have Krillin. You know, with a, a charm on his face because it makes him more charming. As a means... Is there a guy flying in the air? Did you guys see that? He was literally like flying up where Mrs. Sticks is right now. So he's basically doing what I'm doing? That he was, was an NPC. Too? Oh, he was an, an NPC. NPC. <laughs> NPCs can fly too. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll definitely make a, a guild. This guy's like backward somersaulting. Ew, he's on fire. Stop, stop, and roll. Leave him. Leave I him. can help you. Oh god, he really is. Oh, blah. Oh, that's what you get when you don't stop, drop, and roll. Did you not pay attention in preschool? Wow. Hiya. Oh wait, wrong stance. I got her. Kill her. Ah! I've been murdered. That's what I get. Uh -huh. right here. Uh -huh. Woo! We did it. Yes. Scored. Hey, Warden. Hello and greetings from Germany. Love your channel and the stream idea is pretty cool. Have fun. Thank you. Guten Tag. Together we will prevail. <laughs> Are you teabagging her? Stop teabagging her, dick. <laughs> Luna, you can you can kill him now. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I ain't gonna teabag you. I learned my lesson. Uh, <laughs> uh well, you know what? Playing Overwatch with Mrs. Sticks helps me keep my weight at a minimum, too. What does that mean? Having to carry you. <gasps> hey! If I don't make it through this stream, then, ah, then I want this used as evidence in the trial of my demise. You could probably roast them. There's a fire right there. All right. Come here. Place Come her here. into the fire. Get in. And you. With the cat. <laughs> oh, she's willingly going in. Okay. Cool. When your dinner cooks itself for you. 
Look at me. I look like an amazing Krillin, though. You guys gotta admit, I am a goddamn epic looking Krillin. Ah! Teleport. Oh god, where's Goku when I need him? Uh, uh, oh, this is giving me flashbacks of that Frieza incident. Uh, no. Oh my god, this guy's name is Yamcha! <laughs> guys! Guys, his name is Yamcha! Oh, and he's gonna get his butt kicked by Krillin! And Frankie, I don't know. Styx has these weird things that he just thinks aren't normal. This is the strangest thing I've ever come across. All right, so one time, oh, here's here's the main secret. He films most of his uh, his mobile games on the toilet. Okay, was, I, I feel like that's not much of a surprise though. But one time he was sitting on the toilet so long playing a game that his legs actually went to sleep. And when he stood up, he thought it would be a grand idea to grab like the, the hand tail rack, which is right across from him to keep him from falling because his legs just like gave out on him. And instead of just, you know, going down in a crumple and being just fine, he took down the handrail, ripped it out of the wall. And I run in there because I've heard this big boom And I was like, oh my gosh, what is going on? And I run in there. And he has grabbed a little hand towel and he's put it over his nibbly bits and he's standing there and he's like, I'm fine, I'm okay, you can leave now. <laughs> and we had to call out maintenance to come fix it. We had to like kind of like half-ass explain what happened. I yep. just remember standing there and being like, why are you covering your nibbly bits? We're married. <laughs> But that was his first instinct was quickly cover himself up. But guys, like when I, this is when I try to explain to Mrs. Sticks, like say this is where the NPC is, right? Where Mushin is. And this is Mrs. Sticks. She'd be like, where is the NPC? And I'm like, look to your left. Okay, and this is her. I'd be like, no dear, that's your right. Look to your left. And she's like, Weep. and I'm like, no, just a little bit to your left. And she's like, Weep. I think you're confusing me for you. Come on, guys, get up! Your feet aren't bound. Are their feet bound? Their feet aren't bound. If you look closely, Little they disappear. Fast asleep. If you look closely, their arms, their wrists aren't even bound. Like, guys, just walk out. Okay, this is what you gotta do. Just watch and learn. <laughs> See, this isn't even real fire. It doesn't even deal any damage. Your gassiness bothers me. I'll bet. I bet it'll bother everyone else here too if they had to smell it. There was one time when uh, Styx was walking out in like the living room area, and I was all the way oh, in like my bathroom, which is a completely separate area of this two bedroom apartment, mind you. And I walked out into the living room, and just this wall of just the most disgusting decay smell hit my nose. And I'm a nurse, and I've smelled some smells, okay? I've smelled gangrenous skin, GI bleeds, like, you name it, I've smelled it. This was beyond anything I'd smelled before. And I instantly, like, ran back into the room screaming and, like, covering my nose and the smell came with me. And all I hear from out in the living room is sticks going, hee <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's not, it was worse than C. diff. C. diff has like a <sighs> sweet smell. Like it doesn't really bother me. Someday soon I'm gonna make